You had to make Maybe a face. Can, yeah, you tried. Oh no, what are you? <laughs> I'm drawing I a face. See, I can see where this is going. <laughs> ready? I've never stopped you before you finish. Welcome to another episode of the Decog Podcast. Yeah. This week, we are first going to start off with Netflix incorporating NFTs to one of their shows, Stranger Things, yeah. um, season four. They said like you have a chance to win an NFT. Uh, I mean, that seems like a very uh, enticing for me. Yeah. Since I'm into NFTs. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> but again, you know, we always talk about like what's the utility. And it doesn't have to be utility if it's art. Yeah. But like for something like a show. Yeah. You know, what, why release an NFT collection? Like what is the NFT collection for? Is it just art? Mm -hmm. Is it like, does it have some unlockable? Like, is it a key to something else? So they didn't mention much. We really don't know what yeah. this is going to do. Like, I mean, there's no, there's not much information now online. Exactly. Think. Yeah. But why we decided to take a look at this, because this does blend our worlds of being a traditional, like, I guess, artist with NFT space. Because yeah. now it feels like people are trying to incorporate NFTs to this traditional way of watching content, right? To make it more interactive. Yeah. But then again, like like you said, like, do we really care about like, yeah, like earning what? something, an achievement for watching a show? Like, yeah, what is there I'm, I'm kind of curious. Like, yeah, what what is the purpose of it? Is it yeah, maybe it's just like an yeah. achievement. You know, you know how everybody has achievements when you play games. You get yeah. like the gold achievement or whatever. Yeah, or yeah. a participation award. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a participation award, yeah, but yeah. you have a chance to win it. You yeah. need to participate, but you might not get the participation award. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe we'll give it to somebody else, but not you. I'm oh, sorry. Man. If I told my mom, traditional Asian parents this, it's like, you, you need some validation for watching a show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to prove to your friends, hey, look, guys, it's yeah. verifiable on the blockchain yeah. that I watched watch the show. show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But not this other guy, though. Yeah. He didn't win it. So. Yeah. <laughs> but it's so, like, so crazy. Like, what can you possibly win? Uh, maybe it's collectibles or, you know. Um, I mean, it would be cool if it was like, yeah, if it was like some... Um, where you win this uh, NFT and then you can claim mm -hmm. it for something like a yeah. merch, like yeah. a collectible, like a physical collectible. Yeah. So this is all we've got so far. Like they, so I'm not sure what, whoa. Oh, it's actually interactive. That's kind of cool. Oh, wow. Wait, so you, you have to decode something. Oh, this, this looks fun. This is interactive now. <laughs> oh, wow. This is cool. So is this how you win the NFT? Hey, where's my NFT? <laughs> <laughs> You have to make Maybe a face. Can, yeah, you'd have to draw something like, draw something. Oh, God. <laughs> oh no, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm drawing I a face. See, I can see where this is going already. <laughs> I'm drawing a face. <laughs> this is a smile. And the two eyes, yeah. I'm glad I stopped I can you. See. <laughs> I'm glad I stopped you before you finished. <laughs> Stopped me in my tracks. Okay, yeah. So I'm guessing there's some puzzle, right? Like, like you said. Yeah. And but then, you know, like all the internet sleuths, they're going to be uh, on Reddit going crazy on this one. Yeah. So. Well, okay. Let's say if like, you do win something, I wonder whether you can even resell. Like, what's the value <laughs> yeah, of Yeah, what's the resale value? Yeah. So, but yeah, that's interesting. Because, yeah, yeah, speaking of which, this ties into another show, which yeah. recently has done NFTs. You mentioned this earlier. It was yeah. like The Walking Dead also yeah. had an NFT collection. I think when you first told me, like, you know, a few minutes ago, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, ah, what, what are you yeah, going to do with that? Yeah, what's The Walking Dead going to do with NFTs? But they actually, they, yeah. they're quite, you know, they're relatively expensive. I don't um, point one something ETH. Point one. What is that? Point 400 four. USD yeah. almost? Yeah. So it's definitely not cheap. And when you look at it, not bad quality, right? Like it actually... Uh... Yeah, that's what I was surprised about. I was like, yo, this looks pretty good. <laughs> So I mean, when you told me, I thought that I was going to get like some like sticker or something <laughs> as an NFT. But it's not a generative uh, yeah. imagery. So it's, I think they've just made like a, mm -hmm. a bunch of one of ones, but then they decided yeah. to distribute like a bunch of, yeah, distribute it multiple times. So, I mean, um, I really like it. There's a lot of NFT projects around this price that the quality, there's probably more utility, but in yeah. terms of, let's just talk about quality, like. The it's quality of the art is good. To this, like yeah. at all, not even close. So, in terms of that, I'll be. I feel safer to to put my money into this if I saw if I saw it and I didn't know anything about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's an already established IP. Yeah, uh, I guess they're branching out and trying their hand at, at NFTs. Yeah, it seems like it's some sort of access pass, according to the OpenSea page, at least. Yeah. Um, in the description, they say that it's like some sort of access pass. Yeah. Uh, to events or something if you scroll all the way up to the very cool. top and the here 
yeah, yeah so Arch- it's like some sort of access to amc twd like the walking dead drops hmm. uh yeah i don't know oh, interesting roadmap. it's uh <laughs> they have their own roadmap which is wow like, <laughs> they're totally like going like <laughs> they're totally hitting all the keywords to, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they've done a, they've done a little bit of research <laughs> yeah <laughs> Guaranteed opportunity. Oh, so mint. you can mint. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah. So the access pass allows you to mint, but what, what do okay. you mint? So, th- I mean, this is, uh, I mean, we haven't really looked into this much, but yeah, I th- that's immediately is something I thought of um, mm-hmm. when you mentioned that Stranger Things is doing their own yeah. NFTs. So, yeah, I guess the broader, the broader theme is that we are seeing a lot of these uh, <clears throat> traditional IPs, already established IPs, like, trying their hand out at nfts and seeing what will come of it i think yeah it's not a bad thing i just hope that they're using it in a smart way instead of just like you know yeah. just using it for the sake of using it yeah i feel like um, maybe there's a, a big part where it's like hey we got to get on this train and and figure um, it out yeah as figure out like, try to make some money out of <laughs> yeah. this or you know yeah, yeah. whilst there's still money to be made or yeah, yeah. something like that but you know, if you're approaching it in that kind of aspect then you're probably going yeah. about it the wrong way so. yeah but then again, if you think about it, a lot of projects right now in the NFT space try yeah. to figure out on the way as well. Yeah, exactly. So it's it, like it's even worse. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> at least these guys have the money. <laughs> yeah, at least you have the money and you have yeah. the uh, the yeah the execution uh, <laughs> yeah. capability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think like one thing why we wanted to bring this up as well as artists, we're working on these shows, these movies, and stuff. And since they're incorporating more of these NFT sort of things into the shows. I feel like artists don't might not even realize they might be working on an NFT when they're yeah. in a project. You might not yeah, you might not know that project is some tied to some sort of NFT thing or Yeah. You work on the actual project and then a lot of times you have the marketing stuff that you have to do. Maybe you as an artist, you're actually working on an NFT thing, not knowing that you're working on yeah, an NFT. It's gonna just be thinking it was a marketing NFT. thing. Yeah. Uh, I can see that being really kind of uh that's kind of like a gray area, especially because there's so much anti yeah. nft yeah uh, like uh, rhetoric i guess in yeah. the in the industry in the art industry yeah, yeah so i wonder like if you're someone who's really anti nft and you end up having to work on an nft project inadvertently yeah like how betrayed must you feel <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's like no, no <laughs> i destroyed the environment <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay um, okay what would you do if you found out like Let's say, well, we're pro NFT, right? So let's say you didn't know you were working on an NFT, but they released it. And this NFT goes, you know, does pretty well. Yeah. Would you feel some type of way if you don't get royalties for it? Yeah. I Thinking mean, that it was just a marketing thing. I, I It's different if you're employed. Like if I was employed, yeah. I, I mean, I know like it, it's no different than if you work on a feature film yeah. you know, when you're employed. You know, like feature films are making like hundreds of millions yeah. of dollars. Yeah. You know, I think, you know, like Avengers Endgame yeah. grossed like 1.2 billion something dollars, right? And it yeah. only costs 300. So somebody's pockets are getting loaded. Yeah. Um, and it's not yours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As yeah. the artist, it's definitely not yours. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's any different if you're employed and they d- decide to make an NFT. Somebody's yeah. pockets are getting loaded. It's probably not yours. You're being employed to do your job. Um, and I think that's fair, right? You made that decision. Mm-hmm. That's why I feel like as an artist, you have some sort of advantage if you just go out and you just make your own NFT artwork and make your own NFT project or something along that line. Because yeah. then, <laughs> you know, at least the profits are direct. It's a direct correlation between how much work you put in and how much you get out of it in the yeah, end. Yeah, So Yeah, I think like I'd rather, even if I only had... A s- one set of skills like just animation i'll figure out some way to like yeah like create something or, yeah do something within that <clears throat> without the realm yeah like um yeah but i just i was just curious because it's like i think i would feel some type of way yeah if they didn't tell me they're just like marketing <laughs> like you know it's different from doing marketing like advertising you know and then if i find out that oh you guys are making like even if one nft like even that nft that the walking dead people made right that was like 400 bucks yeah and you know um like some artists there's something about i mean they, that. they probably sold a lot of those so i mean that one artist that made those mm-hmm. those cubes if it was just one person it could have been a bunch of people but 
I'm sure like money didn't directly go to those guys. But yeah. if you think about it, it's the royalties that get me like that. I feel some sort of way about it because it's like every time they sell that, every time there's a transaction, yeah. the AMC gets it right. Yeah, this and is really like, interesting because they. I mean, it's a little bit off our topic, but yeah. I should mention there was an article, there was a, a piece done by Vice, yeah, um, just a day ago, I yeah. think, and it was on on F- NFTs, and it was about the traditional artwork, the a traditional art world versus NFTs, mm-hmm. and there was a traditional artist who basically said, when he blew up in the traditional art world and he sold his artwork, he basically made like ten percent of like, yeah. the initial sales or whatever, yeah, and yeah. like like it's gone since like it's just yeah like it, it went from like ten thousand on the initial sale and it's been resold a bunch of times on secondary markets yeah for like hundreds of thousands so like like you know 10 20 30 times more than what he initially sold it but he only has seen the initial sales yeah. money so it's probably no better in the traditional art world i think yeah. the reason why um, one would feel bitter if it was in the NFT space, it's because you know the NFTs have this kind of royalty system built into it. Yeah. So if you don't see any of that, then it is kind of like a stab in the gut. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely no better in the traditional art world. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But um, yeah, oh, that's interesting. I need to read that article, actually. Yeah, it, um, I think it was a video they posted on, on, uh, on yeah, their oh, okay. website. Even I mean, better. on the YouTube, yeah. Yeah, so. even better, because... <laughs> I don't Nobody wants to read. read. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Easy, easy. TLDR, man. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So we move on to our next topic. Spider-Man Across the Multiverse has been delayed to 2023 in summer. It's supposed to be one movie, but it's been split into two parts. Wow, right? Interesting. So this was supposed to come out sometime this year. I believe it was summer or like towards the end of this year. But now it got pushed to 2023 summer. Wow. Right. So but that's you... a pretty long push. When you're um, saying like it's split into two, is it like two full length movies? Yeah, two full length movies. Ah, so part okay. one and part two. Interesting. Um, so they're trying to milk that cow. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. That's, anytime someone splits a movie, that's when yeah. I'm like, uh, I can sell twice as many tickets. Because <laughs> <laughs> if, if you watch your first one, you have to watch the second one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. And vice yeah. versa, right? Plus, I um, mean, it is it, the the um, the first Spider Verse was so good. The yeah, the one that came out. I mean, it was so groundbreaking in like yeah, so many ways. Like I I would put it up there in like one of the top, it's animated. like top five animated features of all time. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> oh oh. You heard it here first. No, <laughs> I agree. I think I think everybody sort of agrees. Even the I think the I call them the Gen Pop civilians. Like, oh you know, yeah, the general yeah, the, the civilians. Gen, I would say yeah, yeah. The, the non-animated. Yeah, folk. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think they even they like they love it. They, like the story was good. I think everything yeah. worked. Everything worked really well. Like the story, the style. I mean, the style the was just so fresh. Yeah, you know it. I think the style alone kind of blew everybody away, but yeah. the animation was amazing. Yeah. Everything was just so good. So, yeah, just looking at this, like, oh, man, like, the new characters and stuff. Like, I love this. This is awesome. Um, but, you know, so it is, how do you say it? It is very rare for, I wouldn't say it never happens, but for, a you know, studio to push some, like something as big as this. And, them, like, they already notified everybody that, this is the date that's going to be released in 2022. Yeah. And the fact that they needed to, like, they, after when they announced it, now they are announcing a new date for it to be pushed to, like, 2023. That's a big deal, right? And that doesn't usually happen unless something really, really, I guess, serious um, sort of happens. Yeah. Because they would try, like, studios always try their best to, like, even if they, like, throw money at it, so get more, yeah, yeah. get more Let's people just throw to money, at it. Just throw and, money at it and fix it. <laughs> yeah, because you want it to release, like, you want to stick to that date. Yeah, um, I think pushing the film, you you lose a lot of money, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think this, it, yeah, you lose so much money by pushing the film I, yeah, I as think, a studio. I think even just, like, I think budgeting, yeah, like, that totally screws up your budgeting. And I think, yeah. pretty sure if you set a date, you're, you have to pay, I think, a price to lock into that date. I'm yeah. pretty sure. And it um, always affects other things that they have slated in one way or another. Because, exactly. yeah. you know, they, they've got all their slate of films planned out. And if you start, like, 
you know, yeah. you're kind of like stepping on each other's toes. Like, oh, we got this other film coming out around that same time. Yeah. But then it's like maybe the studio is working on some of the stuff for the other film. So now yeah. you're kind of taking away the time that that studio has to work on this other film. Yeah. So it kind of, yeah, it's eating into everything in one way or another. And yeah. so that's why I th- I feel like that's why they throw money at it because yeah. the alternative, like pushing a film is yeah. like way worse. Yeah. But, but I mean, honestly, like what would you rather do, right? As an artist or like as a director, would you release something on time and it's not like the story's not maybe, maybe 75% there or, or would you rather push it yeah, and then the sto- get the story there like ninety ninety five percent. Yeah, there. I mean, I think that yeah. that pushing it is the right it's, thing to do yeah. because if you think about the IP that they've built that they've established from the first film, mm-hmm. um, that's such a strong brand now. The Spider Verse films, yeah. this animated series. So why mess that up, right? Because I think yeah. that's even worse move. Like, yeah, I think so. Because Spider Man's yeah. really the only thing they've got left now, <laughs> out of the out of all the Marvel characters. That's yeah. the one that they 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 have to like hold on you know, to protect, yeah. right? So yeah. I I think they made uh, the right choice by pushing, but it, also the it was a painful decision, no doubt. Yeah. Um, so you know, and this sort of also leads to the next question: as an artist, like, yeah, like, so when I was working at Sony, this was when you know the projects like is still in there they starting to hire people like animators and stuff they have yeah. other others from other departments but you know uh, as an artist like you get let's say you get hired in 20 like june 2021 right yeah and in your mind this movie is going to release sometime ne- like this year so let's say may 2022 so you plan it so you know okay i'm gonna spend a year in the studio working on this project and then I'm going to go to another studio and work on another cool project, right? Yeah. So what do you do now as an artist when this movie got pushed to next year? So now technically you can move on to a different studio, but that means you lose all, like you might not yeah, get anything that you out, work, of this, yeah. out of this show. So what would you do? Would you stay on for another year until the show is done or do you move on to the next, next thing? Oh man, that's a hard choice. Like, if it was me, I'd probably stay, knowing mm-hmm. that it is Spider-Verse, that it will look cool. Yeah. Um, I I think it's, too, like, to me, it would be too risky to and to work on the show and come out with nothing to show for it. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe somebody else, if you leave, somebody else has to take the shot and reblock block and change yeah. the performance or whatever. Yeah. Um, or, like, your, like, all the sequences that you worked on, if they're doing, like, a lot of editing, mm-hmm. um, like, your entire sequence might just like get get chopped yeah Yeah, yeah. so i mean that's too risky to work on spider-verse and not work on spider-verse at the same time so yeah i feel like i'd stay just to do unless there was like a way better opportunity like if um like disney or something hit me up and they're like hey you want to come like work on like the next like yeah crazy disney film i'd be like okay maybe yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah, i think so too like it's it's a so i feel bad for the artists right now yeah because they can't some of them came on early so they can, you know, get as much out of this show as they can. But now when a project gets delayed, now you're sort of stuck in limbo. Yeah. And it's like, oh, what was I doing this past year? Because a lot of that stuff probably would get cut yeah. or would get redone somehow, right? And Lord, Lord and Miller are also known for people to be adjusting stories till yeah. the very end. So I'm guessing there's going to be a lot of cutting and all that stuff. So, yeah, it's something to really, you know, I guess think about as an artist because I know that when I left Super Pets, for example, it was still early and I was worried about whether my shot, <laughs> when my shots are getting changed, yeah. whether someone's taking over it, you yeah. know, because I was early in the project. Um, I still don't know. So we'll see when, yeah, see, yeah, when you watch the film, you're like, hey, wait a second. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah. That lip sync looks off. Yeah. That can't be me. <laughs> yeah. So that that's one part that really sucks if you can't take something away from it. Yeah. Um, but I am curious, like, because, I mean, I haven't worked on an extended period of time on any project. Because, yeah. you know, in VFX, the turnover is so quick with projects. Yeah. So I think maybe the max you'd go is a year. Mm-hmm. But more often than not, it's like six Half months or yeah. something like that. Yeah. So I don't know, what is it like to work on a film for say like a year and a half to like two years? Like how does the morale get towards the end? Does it like usually kind of get like pretty low as people 
just kind of get sick of the the same yeah or... i think like i think it gets kind of it depends it really depends so the reason why you would be i think a year is okay it's not too bad but it depends on whether you're anything after that is good it's probably because like there's rewrites in the story and when you have to redo stuff again and again and again i think that's what kills morale not yeah. necessarily the length of time yeah you know right. um so it's all the changes that yeah and the, the potential where your shot just it starts off as one thing and you're really happy with it and by the end you're just yeah you're like just, i don't even recognize this yeah. shot anymore <laughs> yeah i think that's what's the killer especially like you know if you know people like directors like lord and miller or writers like them um because they're what they do works but for a traditional animation sense it doesn't because they're changing things all the time yeah and for something like spidey you know a lot of that the complexities of like animating shot, like it will take ages to animate a shot right and then oh suddenly yeah suddenly yeah idea, it's, right? it's changed or it's can like that's the worst yeah like that's the worst fear for me is i spend you know like weeks on a shot and it just you know it's done yeah it's so gone. apparently that's like apparently a lot of that happened in the first one um some people walked in having like these great shots and at, by the end they had nothing because the whole scene got canned yeah that's and crazy. it's like dude i was like <laughs> oh my god yeah the pain ah, yeah <laughs> i feel for you yeah dude i think I, yeah unless I, you've yeah. been through it you wouldn't know the the feeling yeah um, but yeah that does that does yeah I, I guess that's kind of one of the big negatives of pushing it's not just like from a studio financial standpoint but like yeah the artists the poor artists that are working on the exactly the thing. but yeah yeah so next up the 3d print guy from the nft space yeah right so i quickly want to like to show this we've seen him around doing like a uh, bits and bobs in the nft space but i thought yeah. it, it's cool to actually yeah finally see a compilation of all the work he's sort of done yeah he um, mentioned he did this within the it, it's not just nft work some of it it's like a professional web guess, 2 and web 3 space yeah web 2 right. work yeah. And, yeah and web 3 work this yeah. looks really familiar i want to know what uh what game it was I yeah forgot. what game yeah. is that it looks so familiar yeah uh, and some of this stuff is pretty cool this uh is Dude, this like this. among us or something like that i don't know just... i don't think no i don't think so but this looks i think the look looks like great. yeah really cool this stuff looks awesome yeah some of this web 2 stuff is really cool yeah but i mean that's the big thing i <laughs> <laughs> oh man i just got like yeah. smoking jesus <laughs> i'm not even gonna talk about it <laughs> yeah but yeah, yeah so there's um yeah it looks like he does a range of different styles i yeah. if i had to guess he's predominantly That's a cool. um modeling texturing generalist and potent- yeah, yeah he's a generalist um and maybe he's not he's like animation probably isn't his strongest suit but he definitely mm-hmm. has a good uh base level skill set for a lot of these other things yeah but yeah it's good to see him, him uh kind of Getting some attention in the space, um, getting yeah. some followers, and getting some, uh, yeah, some yeah. looks on his work. Yeah, I guess like I just wanted to show this, cause, like we wanted to show this because it's like you know there are some like, of course, if you know as an animator, I wouldn't say this is a good animation, but I think the base level is there, and the, but the look, the main thing is like the look of these things looks, it looks great. Yeah, like, I love this. Like some of the yeah. Like, I, I'm not sure what, like, which elements he worked on for some of this stuff. But yeah. I know, like, uh, for the NFT specific things, he did everything. So, yeah. Even um, this, it looks clean. I like yeah. it. Um, so he's doing some good work in the space. Um, oh, man. I love that. <laughs> which is cool. I yeah. love that little rack. Well, it didn't rotate, but, like, you know, it's yeah, sort like of a little the, bit of a rack zoom. focus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, that's, yeah. That's so cool. it's like there are people that, you know, they are doing some decent stuff in the space and uh, like you know there's always there's always a stigma that yeah you know, uh nft artists are crap yeah um, scammers yeah they're scammers <laughs> not saying that's not true because <laughs> there, there's a lot of scammers yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's very true yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah but you know i think there's two sides yeah. to the to the coin right yeah. so yeah uh, yeah it was good i yeah i think you know showing this is kind of yeah I, I celebrating some of the people who are kind of doing work that's um uh, decent yeah. yeah decent in the space so love that throw yeah. up <laughs> yeah it's so cool the sss i love that yeah. the subsurface on the uh yeah face. on the face yeah 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 but yeah that's so cool. yeah we just want to like yeah 
give this guy his flowers. Yeah. Um, if you we know, find anybody out. else cool, we should uh, definitely share. Because I yeah. think there's a lot of one of one artists that yeah yeah that are doing really cool works. So. Exactly, and I think like you know, um, you know, we want our channel to be showcasing these artists, right? That's the whole point of our channel. It's you know artist centric. Yeah. Uh, animation centric. Um, whether the medium is NFTs or whatever traditional mediums, that's what we should. I guess we want to focus on. So it's nice to sort of like look at these NFT artists and, you know, be like, oh, this is pretty cool work and then showcase them. Yeah. I think that's pretty. Yeah, pretty maybe dope. we should make it a regular thing. Yeah. Like one artist uh, yeah. per episode. Yeah. So if you guys are interested, please check out 3D Print Guy, this cute dude. Um, so yeah, um, moving on. Some exciting stuff happened uh, in the weekend. So <laughs> this project called The Other Side. Uh, yeah, Billy was a part of this. I'm slightly traumatized still from the uh, yeah. from from it all, but <laughs> yeah, in a good way, like a good trauma trauma. But yeah, um, I think we talked a little bit about it in the last podcast about how there's like, this is the going to be side. a big yeah, and yeah. then that I was going to um, potentially mm. mint this. Yeah. and I was lucky enough. So what they did was they partnered with a big player in the space. Uh, mm -hmm. known as Animoca, Animoca brand, Labs. Animoca Labs. Yeah. Everybody's called Labs in this, yeah, in, no. in the NFT yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, But yeah, they partnered with Animoca and uh, like Yuga partnered with Animoca and Yuga is the, yeah. basically the parent company for Bored Apes, yeah. for CryptoPunks now, for MeBits, yeah. uh, for just a whole bunch of projects. Um, yeah. But uh, this was their latest uh, project. It's... Um, called the other side and it's these uh plots of land which is going to exist in this larger sort of mmo style metaverse mm -hmm. uh, you know platform that they're trying to build yeah um i'm not exactly sure how this ties into everything yeah you know there's not a lot of uh concrete information about how these lands work yeah um when this platform is going to be released is mm -hmm. it going to be like more a game is it going to be more an open metaverse kind of world yeah you know what what sort of play are they trying to do here i, I it seems like based on the partners that it, it's going to be some type of game yeah potentially like a play to earn game yeah um sort of like axie infinity where you get a you get a play with the the um you get a play in the game and earn you know, Axie, yeah, which yeah. is the token, yeah. and then trade so, that in for real money. Was, so this, yeah. yeah, this could be a play to earn sort of thing. Um, but again, I, I have not a lot of information. Yeah. So what was crazy is that it pretty much busted the whole system. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like it, it broke the, the entire the, Ethereum <laughs> network. <laughs> yeah. Because there's so many people minting and because there's so many big players that are in the Web2 space and well, and just people who are in Basie, right? who's trying to mint this other side uh, NFT and it basically shot up the gas pr like the gas price to like 2.5 ETH, right? Yeah, um, I think, uh, yeah, pretty high. Like some people were paying even higher, like yeah. three to five ETH. <clears throat> that's uh, crazy. Just for so, transaction fees. So just so you know how much that is, that's three, one, one ETH is about 3,000 right now. Yeah. So, you know, that's, it's, that's uh, a lot Yeah, so yeah. imagine paying, uh, <clears throat> what is it? Uh, Fifteen hundred dollars commission, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just a, a, as a transaction fee. Yeah, yeah, transaction fee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you try to send money to yeah. your relatives overseas and you had to pay fifteen hundred, <laughs> yeah, but your your transaction was like a hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're sending them a hundred dollars, but you had to pay fifteen hundred. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's like yeah, thanks. Kind of yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so <clears throat> um, luckily you went through it sort of unscathed. If anything, you made back the initial cost and got. Yeah, so um, I did all the land. right moves. Uh, yeah, and it was very, it was very um, stressful for me because yeah. leading up to it, I wasn't sure whether I was going to mint because mm -hmm. so many things could go wrong. So initially, you have to pay this specific token called Ape yeah. token in yeah. order to mint one of, the de one of these deeds. Yeah. So you had to go on like a central exchange like Binance or Coinbase or whatever it might be mm -hmm. to buy this Ape token which has its own, it's like, it's a crypto. So it has its own fluctuating price. So mm -hmm. you could buy it at the wrong spot and you would have overpaid by like 
thousands of dollars yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) um so you had to buy like a lot of ape you know we're talking like in orders of like almost like fifteen thousand dollars worth of ape that's crazy yeah just to mint this and that's not even including the transaction fees right yeah yeah. i had to spend a bunch of money buying the ape so i had to basically figure out the right point to buy to maximize the amount of Mm -hmm. profit that you could potentially or minimize the amount of risk i should say yeah yeah and then not only that you have to i had to buy a bunch of eth as well just so i could spend it on the transaction but nobody could predict how much the transactions would cost because we knew there was a lot of people who wanted to mint so going into this everybody was aware that there was probably going to be a gas war so Mm -hmm. gas war is when everybody's trying to use uh the network at the same time Mm-hmm. like more often than not just to mint these nfts yeah. and what happens is if everybody's trying to use the network at the <clears> same <throat> time uh to, in order to front run the transactions you have to pay more so mm-hmm. people ended up paying like astronomical like three to five ETH. some, some yeah. of them i ended up paying a lot too like somewhere in the mid two point like two to three ETH. Yeah. so like all these factors combined i i could have if i didn't managed to mint because i didn't pay enough gas and i was mm-hmm. too late in the uh in the queue yeah i might not have got one and i would have ended up with just a lot of ape tokens which instantly crashed yeah. after the mint because yeah. that's the only reason everybody bought the token yeah so there was so much risk going into this that i yeah. was definitely not comfortable <laughs> yeah but thankfully everything worked out for me because i think i did the right calculations it was insane it was like i felt like i was like thinking yeah. like harder than i ever had to think in order to figure this out but i mean also like yeah i think you did like really good preparation but there's some people who i guess you know they they paid the gas but they didn't receive anything yeah so i'm like also thinking oh man that's like such shit luck yeah because you you basically yeah i i think the worst part is um so you got uh the company who basically released this they they went ahead and reimbursed everyone who didn't manage to get uh, like, yeah. a deed and they basically reimbursed them the gas cost thank god yeah. which is great like you know yeah. we're talking like thousands of dollars there yeah per person who who yeah. didn't get one but i think the this the poor part is like the part that they just probably couldn't reimburse is like the fact that the price of the ape token just plummeted yeah, yeah. because not only were um, people who wanted to buy the token for this mint there was a lot of traders because this is one of the most hyped tokens yeah. out there at the time because of this particular mint uh, just so you'd like more context this is like the biggest this is the biggest mint in the history of nfts mm-hmm. so this was probably the the single biggest event mm-hmm. in nfts since the inception of nfts yeah because yeah. just the sheer volume of people who were trying to get one of these and yeah, yeah like for so many reasons it, it probably broke like so many records like the yeah. number of gas spent yeah um and yeah the, the number of dollars raised yeah uh, yeah it was historic in in a lot of ways so how does it feel to be a part of it i don't know it felt <laughs> looking back it, it it all worked out so it feels great yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah had had i been one of these other people who it didn't work out for i would have, i would be very upset so another thing that you did was that <clears throat> quickly i know we're talking about the like more the technical side of nfts right which we'll get back to the artist side later but um what was smart i think what you did was you minted two but then once like at the highest price so it was like at seven or, or eight right yeah it was around about eight yeah you sold it to sort of recuperate the cost so then at least you still had one but yeah. you had no more risk yeah exactly yeah. so that's something <clears throat> i learned in the past yeah. just from being like in the space for a while and having seen how yeah. these things go yeah um usually there's a there's like a lot of hype right after the mint um mm-hmm. and um there's a process called revealing i mean we've done a few reveals on on this yeah. channel already the long lost yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so um there was a process where they reveal the land but before that like right after the mint there's a period of time uh, pre-reveal where people are just trading these things like crazy um mm-hmm. there's like nft traders nft investors or even just like people who wanted to buy this but didn't 
do the KYC. Yeah. Um, they couldn't be. They couldn't mint this. So there's a lot of like interest in in trading and buying this. So I knew there was going to be this uh, frenzy of like people buying and selling. So pre-reveal. Yeah, pre-reveal. Yeah. So I yeah. decided, you know what, I'm going to do the pragmatic thing. Yeah. And, you know, I already put there's just so much risk already with the amount spent that I was like, I don't feel comfortable just holding on to this and yeah, yeah. and waiting. So I sold just to break even essentially. Yeah. Recuperate my costs. Yeah. But now you have one of these deeds that's cost like well right now the floor price is 3.5 right but that's 3.5 that you know that's profit all profit if you sold yeah it. exactly so yeah. that's like something i think a lot of people need to you know don't get need to think about i think in the space where they're they get too greedy and they try to get as much as they can yeah you know and like you could have let's say if you held on to it a little bit longer now you would have been down like a lot <laughs> yeah right yeah, i would have been i mean if i uh, now i would have had to sell both to and then i would still be at a loss yeah so so i think a lot of people try to risk it and then say like oh maybe it'll jump out to 40 eth yeah right maybe it will but yo like if a large portion of your capital was spent on this, this is not like this is not like 20 bucks for it like yeah. for us it's like thousands and thousands right yeah like, yeah yeah so it's better and safer to sort of it was a, i think it was a smart choice and a safe choice to to do that to sell yeah. yeah but that's one thing i think uh yeah so this i made all the right calls which is great mm -hmm. uh, and i think that's something that i learned over time and this is something that like i th not just nfts but like like crypto and mm -hmm. and whatnot there's something about both crypto and nfts mm -hmm. that i think the longer you're in it the more aware of certain concepts that are high level concepts about just like the reality of the world that you just didn't mm -hmm. understand beforehand so i had yeah. I, I look back now at me before like pre-crypto mm -hmm. and i feel like i'm so naive in the way the world works mm -hmm. compared to i like how things are now because you understand so much more uh just simple concepts like economic concepts like supply, supply and demand. demand yeah you know everybody knows yeah if there's high demand and there's yeah. low supply you know yeah. the thing's worth a lot but to see it in action and to go through and to see the waves and to see yeah how you can kind of ride these waves and and just understanding the cycle of this mm -hmm. uh is already like such a mind-blowing experience yeah uh, and then then you know getting into crypto you start learning more about like um, you understand money better, like the concept of money. Mm -hmm. So that's something like as an artist, you know, I've been so focused in art side of things that I, I completely disregarded this like very fundamental concept of like society, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, what is money and how do yeah. you make money or like why is something valued a lot? Um, and then I think understanding this concept can somehow improve you as a person, like it rounds you out more so that you you kind of like if you start making artwork it's like what will make my artwork valuable because mm -hmm. a lot of it is like i hate to say it but it's just perception as well like your art is valued um based on how other based on the market right so you, you don't dictate your own artworks value other people dictate your artworks value yeah so how do you build value you know in like a perceived value in your art yeah, I guess it's a bit different with this and like um, I totally get what you mean though. Like, uh, like I also think like I do think knowing, learning about money, like being in the crypto, being into crypto, that like you said, and for me, like more stocks and just like trading, you do. It's good to know that because you do understand the simple like the concepts of yeah supply yeah, and demand because yeah. that's really important because it's such um, a fundamental concept to society but yeah i think it's sort of like for the longest time yeah yeah like people throw that around all the time supply and demand blah, blah, blah. but you actually really understand it like it really is like everything like um as in it's a like it, it, it accounts for it's a, a cliched of, statement yeah. but it's very like once you understand it you're like yeah oh like yeah, yeah this, life yeah, does this is a difference. revolve around this yeah. <laughs> yeah i think there's a big difference between like the yeah. theoretical understanding of it and like the the intuitive understanding of yeah, it. yeah yeah and i think like after having been in the space for so long this was a great example it was almost like a graduation for me yeah. in a lot of ways yeah because i think like intuitively i started to understand market dynamics yeah. um a lot better because i had to 
there's a lot of like game theory involved in like yeah. doing, minting something like this. And I think for people who are just coming into the NFT space, um, I think it's very risky actually to mint something like this. It seems like it's very low risk, but it's actually when you think about it, there's a lot of risk involved because you have to buy the token. So not only that, you have to understand what's going to happen. Yeah, with what's going to happen after. with the token? Yeah. Exactly. Like, yeah. Um, and you have to understand the trading mentality, like what traders do mm-hmm. um, when they see, like you know, what is it? When's a good time to buy the token? As yeah. simple as like a simple question like that is a yeah. very complicated answer, right? Because there's different different types of traders yeah there's different yeah yeah different types of personalities but at the same time like you have to think about for the majority like what would the majority think because that's what's going to control the price of the um yeah like the token right or the stock or the crypto or whatnot so yeah like right after like you said when everybody's minted there's no use for the token anymore. There's no for them. Use, yeah. So everybody's for the, just yeah, dumps. Yeah, for the foreseeable future. So, so yeah, the, yeah, the token lost half its value. Just so yeah. people know, like from since minting till ne- like till now, it's lost half the value. But even before then, when it peaked, it was it was mm. like it's lost like more than half its value. It's lost like you know seventy something, eighty yeah. percent of the value, which is crazy. Because if you're one of those people who got in trying to mint this thing you could have just failed because you didn't have you didn't pay enough gas and you would have lost a ton of money just from holding on to this token yeah which unless is like, you like had that quick like you had that planned and you're like as in you didn't you weren't successful in your mint and you already had that like had that in your mind that oh, backup I, need plan. To yeah, I need to sell this yeah immediately and yeah. you might have sold at a loss but yeah even then it would have been a much less yeah a loss, loss yeah than holding on till now yeah so um, it's not easy, like I think um, being in the NFT space, because um, there's so many, um, there's so much like noise as well. There's so so much to know and understand, mm-hmm. um, and I've, I've, that's why I sympathize with a lot of people who are new to the space. Uh, I think you just need to spend time. You need to spend some time in the space to sort of start to understand how yeah. things work. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, it definitely would suck. Like, I feel bad for the people who lost out on this, to be honest. Um, I totally understand, it, like, with something that failed to mint. Um, yeah. I know that feeling, even though my project was even anything crazy. <laughs> so I can't imagine, like, this one, right? Yeah. Um, but it's sort of, it is what it is. At least you're getting your gas feedback. Yeah, at least you get your For people your who gas. only That's had it. gas fee problems. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, for other people who had like the ape coin problem, I'm sorry. Yeah, but, yeah, so, there's not much you can do. Exactly, but um, yeah, what you said about like perceived value, like for artists, I I totally agree. Like with that, um, just because you know you worked hard on something, doesn't mean that has value, like or yeah. that has that value that you want. Yeah, because no, it's um, it might be valuable to you if you've put yeah. a lot of effort in making your artwork. Yeah, but I think the difference between like making artwork for the sake of making art and making art eventually with the intention of selling it, um, I think there's a little bit more involved because it's not only like how how much you you put in, but it's it's also like how much do you th- like do you think it's going to be valuable to somebody else? So how do you like as an artist? Like I know that's a very hard question. That's a very hard question, and I. Like, I know what you're gonna ask, and I know. how do you how do you know whether some like how do you create how do you know what you're creating is gonna be high value like what that's, yeah that's people love high. steps <laughs> so I personally don't think there are any um, I don't think there's any either I mean I, if there was a step it would be to be consistently good probably I think that's the that's the step <laughs> that's yeah. step one um, you have to be consistent. Uh, consistently making good artwork and over time it'll play out in your favor so i love to use beeple as the example like mm-hmm. why when when beeple made his big yeah debut in the nft space and he made a ton of money yeah you know i mean the guy ridiculous amounts yeah. um in orders of the hundreds of millions right yeah but everybody knows beeple has been putting in the work yeah for years Right, so it's it wasn't like an overnight thing. Yeah, I think why his work is perceived like to have a lot of value is because you could see the consistency of the artist 
yeah. and the quality. You know, he's been consistently creating high quality things for decade yeah. plus, right? So yeah. how do you deny someone like that, um, like having value in the art? Yeah. I think he was there at the right place at the right time. Yeah. Um, and he's done the work and people know that he's done the work and that's why. Yeah, I think made. it's, yeah, you're right. I think it's a consistency. Because, um, I mean, his art is also good. Yeah. <clears throat> It's, but, yeah, it's, it's got a very quirky style. Yeah. Um, but I think even technically, I think it's really, like, it It looks good. Because um, yeah. we always had this discussion whether the technical artistry, is it really important? And it is, but there's always people who break that rule. Yeah. You know, and then it makes you question, is it really important? Yeah, is the technical like, aspects yeah. as important as I think? It, I think maybe there's there's so many factors involved with like yeah. how someone would perceive, like what value somebody associates with your art, and I think yeah. a lot of it is to do with, um, it's per, do with perception, right? So yeah, like they will view your artwork as valuable as they believe, like other people would value it yeah yeah so yeah. if they if someone wants to buy your art they would they would be willing to pay the same amount that somebody else that they think that other person would be okay, willing yeah. to pay so yeah because uh, in the in the end they it's almost like they want to hold on to your work and as you develop as an artist your work gets more valuable i mean that's how the traditional art would works right it's almost like consistency and and just um Mm -hmm. just being in the game for for longer and uh yeah. building that uh brand of yours as an artist yeah. so i think for a lot of people who are coming into the nft space and expecting just to sell the artwork you know next day or like sell it for like millions of dollars they're like a lot of people are just kind of getting disappointed and i think that's where a lot of the bitterness comes from as well yeah yeah is where people who are really talented coming in and they're not seeing the results they're not getting that people level money immediately yeah immediately yeah. and they're not getting a ton of followers out of the blue uh they kind of they look at nfts like just some fad or like it's it's not like really it's just like a one-time thing or yeah yeah, yeah. And i think it's because you know <laughs> if you decide to sell art from one day to the next you, you're now having to start from scratch essentially to build your yeah, brand your, as yeah. an artist but if you think about it though, if I was an artist, like I'd be like, if I worked this like for 20, let's say 20 years as an, like a digital artist, right? I'd be like, well, I'll just, every week I'll post something. I already have like a catalog yeah. of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, oh, this is great. Like I just, yeah. I don't need to have to worry about, oh, I have to paint everything every day, like, or something, right? Yeah. yeah. You also have like, you can slowly post that and then to build your Twitter profile and then eventually, you know the audience would catch back up right yeah um but yeah man i totally i totally understand how it's hard to build your artist profile like i'm going through it i'm still on like 900 uh close to a thousand soon closing closing yeah, yeah, in you're closing yeah in. maybe yeah. the next podcast oh, God, it's been so long. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but um yeah. i i think that's um yeah i guess j like tying this whole crazy um nft thing back to the yeah practicality uh, yeah for, for artists yeah that's something to be and i think you have to be in the space for a while you can't just come in and and think expect yeah, to yeah. dominate right so yeah. uh, except the chair guy the do you hear guy? about this the chair guy no okay maybe we, we'll quickly add this topic in oh right yes um, yeah this is actually an important topic so there's a lot of hate uh thrown towards this guy um yeah in the last i guess the last week um yeah because of some drama involved with uh i i uh yeah with uh a, a <clears> model <throat> that he basically bought off sketchfab uh worth 30 dollars yeah. and yeah. he somehow re i think he re reprocessed like he he reused that but it was more yeah. or less just a very minimal adjustment yeah to that model and he basically sold that again yeah uh, so yeah it was a chair it was a picture of a chair i'm going to try to find it actually um i follow. i think i followed the guy or yesterday i liked his um here this guy <laughs> yeah so basically he um he made this chair he's on super rare now by the way 
Right. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. I mean, yeah. um, he, he's been doing a lot of work outside of... Um, <gasps> My details. <laughs> <laughs> he's been doing a lot of work outside of uh, the, oh, I guess, the... Um, oh, why did he do that? The NFT space. Yeah. So... Um, um, I think he's kind of only finally... Uh, yeah. The real the real chair is that what he did? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is pretty pretty cool. Um, let me. Yeah. Pretty cool chair. I mean, I like the details and stuff. I think it looks great. So basically, he was selling this for thirty five bucks on Sketchfab, like you said. Yeah. And this Danguiz guy, who's like a verified Twitter like twitter profile yeah he's, he's an got artist. a big following yeah got a big um, following he's been in the nft space for a little bit like selling a, a ton of stuff like a ton of nfts yeah but just so happened he decided to take this 3d model and then sell it with minimal adjustments like you said as yeah. an nft right but you like you can see how that's a problem because that's like sort of yeah you bought it but you're selling it for a thousand something dollars yeah i think it was more than that i think it was like somewhere 600 yeah it was, it was close to like an eth or something I yeah think. yeah um but he was his justification was like oh it's a temporary it's like the pre-reveal uh artwork or something like that yeah, uh, along those cool. lines yeah. but yeah i i mean even if it was you should you shouldn't just take something and use it as is yeah you know it's almost like yeah, it's yeah. It's like if it I just like feels very shady. It's like I'm making like a Lego animation, my own. But then I put the Lego poster in my freaking like to sell like to sell it to my fans. It's like yeah. yo, you didn't work <laughs> on that. Like, yeah. you know, it's like you didn't work on that movie. Or like you're not in charge of that movie. Why are you putting it on? Um but I guess the difference is he did buy the product, you know. Uh, yeah, but that's so technically, I mean technically he, yeah. like legally I think he has the rights to use it however he deems fit. Yeah, uh, but I mean, there could be so many legal gray areas in the yeah. Sketchfab, uh, yeah, you know, terms and conditions of the use. Yeah, um, but I mean, it an... could be considered like distribution. Like he's just yeah. redistributing it at a higher value. Okay. Yeah, potentially. I don't know. Yeah. But I feel like that's like okay. Let's say maybe there's a legal issue. Maybe there isn't. But as an artist, as code a of moral, conduct. Yeah, a moral that's, issue. There's yeah, definitely a moral issue. Yeah, there. that's messed up. Like <laughs> if someone did that to me, I would be mad. Like I would be mad as hell. Um, and basically, um, he's also had this artist also had a problem with something like another person a year before, right? Um, with another piece of art. Yeah, but, it's, um, it was very like, was similar. More, I mean, that's definitely a little bit yeah. more gray area because yeah. it was a very similar piece. Yeah. That um, one artist uh, did, and this other artist, Dan Gui, Gui is, Yeah. Decided to do as well. Very similar in the style and the feel. Like one of them, like it was basically uh, somebody looking up at like a, a series of buildings. You know, you got the cool perspective and a lot of buildings yeah. in the background. Yeah. And then when it was a character sitting down looking at that with a cat next to them. Yeah. And this Danguiz guy did the exact same thing. Yeah. It's like a series of buildings in the background. Yeah. With and a with a person sitting there and a cat beside them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like it, it wasn't the same artwork. But it was like the the idea was basically the same. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm, I would say like it's like when people do cover songs. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was like a cover. It was like yeah, yeah you'll take yeah. on the same idea. Yeah. Um, but with his little spin on it. But yeah. so that's when it, it was a bit like it was hard to say for that one. Yeah, because it's hard to say. You know, it's 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 similar to the whole Ed yeah. Sheeran music thing where he, he yeah. recently won, where it's like, you you might have a hook or something that sounds very familiar. Yeah. Um. But and as uh, and as an artist, you know, you see so much art all the time. Sometimes something get like gets in your head. Yeah. And you like you think it's an original idea that you came up with, but it's really just the, something you've seen in the past. But you yeah, didn't yeah. know you couldn't make that association when you were making that. Yeah, artwork. yeah. So I mean, that happens all the time, right? Exactly. In the creative world, so yeah. it's kind of more forgivable. But if you blatantly take <laughs> yeah. somebody's. 3d model and you try to pawn it off as your own like that's that's not like yeah. you, that's not forgivable at that point it's like yeah and what i really didn't like it's uh, well what i'm glad it's i'm glad the twitter space rained down on him yeah know? i think basically um, everybody on twitter just just gave yeah. him like crap which you know deservedly i, I yeah. in my opinion i don't know he didn't the apologize story. at first like he was like defending it and then i think when it got too heavy it was like then he apologized he took a step back but my thing is, is that 
he was selling this on a platform called super rare which is hard to get into and then you can sell a lot of these artworks for a lot of money right yeah so being on super rare is almost like a verification that you are some sort Legit of artist yeah like some sort of serious um artist and yeah be, just being on super rare gives you your artwork already clout. like a base yeah, yeah yeah it gives you yeah it gives you clout as an artist but it also get, it yeah. values your artwork like the base amount you can charge yeah goes up like yeah a lot you know you can start charging like exactly. one eth two eth three eth 10 yeah. eth for your artwork 50 eth if you want yeah but um yeah so but yeah that that's the thing like imagine as you're like an investor or someone who like liked his artwork and you bought it for like a heavy price like well like let's say yeah the expensive price how would you feel after when this news comes out because it would start make you question like yo is all your like work just like you yeah just ripped like off some, people yeah like so as know? an art investor you're yeah. kind of at the like you're at the whims of the artist as well which yeah. is like yeah um it's not a good thing if the artist isn't doing this kind of morally questionable not even morally questionable just like morally like this disgusting yeah kind of uh yeah yeah, these actions right yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) where yeah so i think yeah this is partially why there's such a bad rap in the uh, nft space space. yeah yeah. because you know when you have like quote unquote an nft artist yeah doing something like this it just makes it seem like everybody who's in the nft art scene yeah is like some shady yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some shady like scam artist. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it, yeah. So it's terrible. I think this yeah. is terrible news for the people in the space. Yeah, but I'm glad that this person. Yeah, actually... the original artist. So I think he like the original artist like because there was so much like, I guess publicity about it on Twitter that maybe he caught wind, and I think it I actually got him a super rare account like, like application yeah. like really quickly, <laughs> which is great. And then he's you know what's crazy, he put this chair up on super rare for $35 yeah <laughs> on super rare so that's like 0.0 I think something ETH, I love right? that yeah but then like you said someone increased the bid to 11 ETH in just 40 seconds <laughs> but I love Man, that he didn't, so he didn't oh, he didn't price it himself like yeah, he didn't he overprice didn't, it yeah after, he didn't like, price like he priced it how much he priced it yeah on, on Sketchfab yeah Sketchfab which yeah. is almost like it was genius yeah like in a, in a lot of ways like that's yeah. That's creative thinking yeah, right, yeah. right there, right? Where you're just like, I understand that this has value now because yeah. of this whole drama. Yeah. But I'm I'm not going to like descend. Capitalize. Yeah, I'm not gonna, yeah. yeah, I'm not going to descend to this like yeah. degenerate, like money yeah. making kind of yeah. uh, mentality. But I'm going to, yeah, put it up for 35. <laughs> but, yeah. And, you know, probably because of that, he got to 11 ETH. I think yeah. like, I honestly believe if he priced it at 10 ETH, people he, would be yeah, like, maybe at think- most it'll go up to 15 but now I'm like, yo, I don't know. I feel like this would go up like, yeah, like it just automatically got that much more value. Yeah, I think yeah. Even if he yeah, if, <clears throat> if he priced that at five, it probably wouldn't have yeah. made it to eleven. Like yeah, that, yeah. you know. So I mean, maybe I, I don't want to say yeah. not, but it's hard. It's hard to understand the market dynamics with yeah. this sort of stuff. But I think he did the right thing, and yeah. um, that's a. That's I'm a, glad a, that that's yeah, a gangster it, play, man. Yeah, that was yeah. some gangster play, you know. But what makes me like? What if this like this, this is like some conspiracy yeah. theory? Oh, oh! <laughs> but wait. what if these two are in on it, <laughs> and he bought this for thirty five dollars, and some huge drama came? Like they leaked that that it was like, oh, it's actually yeah. uh, they actually know each other in real life. But he leaked out like, oh, look, this other artist stole this person's work. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but it was actually them leaking this info out, and then Man, now they decided like- to jump on Super Rare and yeah. <laughs> You're like that, like, it's when we watch that Kobe fight. Yeah. He, you were saying the same thing. You know, like, it's fabricated drama. Yeah, it could be It could be fabricated drama just so that yeah. they both maximize the amount that this one piece sold for. <laughs> okay, so I would believe that if it wasn't for, like, this other, the Dan Guiz guy. Oh, he, yeah, his reputation. He had so much point. reputation yeah. that was on the line, right? But... Man, that is true. A lot of people fabricate drama to get like an extra buck. Yeah. Kanye, you know. Yeah. Kanye is the notorious for this. And, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Kanye is probably the master of this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, let us know how you guys think about like this guy and his sort of what he did. Like, because, you know, it leaves us our taste in our mouths when people do this um, yeah. as an artist. So it'll be good to see what you guys 
uh, what you guys think about it. And honestly, like what you guys think about all the topics we talked about today. Yeah, we went through a lot, actually. Yeah. Um, so we get to know what, yeah. Um, what are your thoughts? If you like the video, please comment and like the video and subscribe. And we will catch you on the next episode. Peace. Peace. Thanks for watching or listening to our content. If you like what you saw, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks again. Peace.